uh, we will have a conversation for about uh, 40 minutes, and for that, we will have to rearrange the stage. So I'll ask uh, my colleagues, uh, Khatul and Tamara, would you please uh, help me with the tables? Thank you. Now, may I have uh, Mo, Arno, Max, and Ilmira here? Would you please join me here? Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm going to sit here. Goedenavond, Amsterdam. En de. Somewhat. Oké. Oké. We will have a conversation for about, let's say, 20, 25 minutes max. And then I will give the room to the audience to ask you some questions. So, le let me start with Mo. Mo Hersey. Congratulations. Yeah. And Mo, let me introduce you in a proper way. Okay, you came to Halle when you were three years old because of the civil war in Ethiopia. You have done a lot of stuff in your uh, in the past, so we can say, you know, 12, uh, 12 crafts and 13 accidents. And nowadays you are a stage artist and a filmmaker. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Mo, uh, why why did you? Make this <laughs> beautiful film. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, why? Uh, first of all, uh, I want to thank uh, the other filmmakers that were here uh, that I haven't seen the beautiful films, but uh, a round of applause for the other films. Uh, okay. Cool. 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 Uh, um, yeah. The reason why I made this film was um, yeah, I got the opportunity uh, uh, to join Fresh Parish. I think it's uh, two years ago. And uh, in that time frame, I really started developing my message, what I really want to do. And um, so I found my craft with stand-up comedy and, and telling stories and, and, and making videos. And uh, so I got the opportunity by, via Fresh Press to make a documentary. And then it was like, yeah, what? What is the subject? Where are you gonna, yeah, uh, yeah uh, hold your do documentary about? And then I had a very interesting conversation with uh, a lady that's a very good friend of mine, uh, Beri Selmachi. Uh, she lives in Almeida as well. And uh, yeah, I had a discussion with her, like, what do I need to do? And then she says, well, you're a comedian, so you, yeah, you should make a mockumentary. And I was like, what's a mockumentary? Uh, so then I started Googling mockumentaries and uh, I saw the, the famous one that is out there is uh, Life of a Plastic Bag that is uh, narrated by uh, Benedict Cumberbatch and you see a plastic bag going from yeah, a supermarket all the way to the Pacific Ocean. Yeah. And uh, so to, therefore, to therefore, join, to yeah, join the yeah. family of the all yeah. other plastic bags. Yes, yes exactly. Go to back to home. Yes. Yeah. So I started, yeah. So I had the concept mockumentary and then I needed the story. And three years ago, I uh, saw a speech of uh, Alfonso Mwambe. Uh, he's a great thinker and philosopher and uh, he's also yeah, opinion marker. <laughs> I don't know how to translate that. Uh, but uh, yeah, and he had the concept idea of. Yeah, uh, closing the borders between Africa and Europe, but also the other way around. And the reason why is because Africa holds 30% of the world's uh, resources, natural resources. And uh, at the moment right now, uh, Europe is really looking at Africa as a problem, where on the other hand is really robbing them of all the natural resources and all the wealth that's there. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we close the borders, and if you really want to say like, hey, go back to your own country, and if we, yeah, we will stop the discussion, we will go, but we're gonna close the border so you will not have access to the natural resources. So no more holidays, nothing. For 20 years, we're gonna close the borders, and after 20 years, we will see who needs who the most. Okay, good, 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 Kurma. Thank you, okay. Um, 
Arno Peperkorn, um, uh, entrepreneur and co-founder of Include Now Foundation. Include Now Foundation um, is all about diversity, topics of diversity, inclusiveness, and representation. And so, I just a question for th for you as well. What is the most, uh, the nicest, most remarkable thing about the documentary, or should I say, mockumentary, uh, which Mo uh, did? Which part hit you the most? The, the, the arrogance of the white British lady, which is ob obviously acted, yeah. but um, that, that arrogance of saying, why me? Yeah. That's so in our current society, that, yeah. that, that's so much speaking to me about, yeah. about white privilege, yeah. that, that touched me the most. And obviously the, the, the little L countries that you mentioned, which is funny, yeah. but the, the acted arrogance yeah. is so present in the current society that hit me the most. Oh yeah, that was by, by one of my questions as well, you know. Which country she referred to? Do you have any idea? Not you. <laughs> Do you have any idea? Should be Lagos or another country with an L? Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Libya, a uh, little country in Africa. Yes, yes, okay. L Lesotho. Okay. Lesotho, Liberia. Okay, okay, okay. So that's the, the part you liked, or as a matter of you disliked, but you liked. And uh, Max. Uh, Max Coffey, uh, one of the initiators of Africa in, uh, in Motion. Africa in Motion is all about fair trade processes and sustainable use of African raw materials and it's set up by African migrants in Holland and you want to make a, a broad coalition with, uh, to support Africa's economic eman emancipation. Am I right? Yeah, you're right. Only uh, about fair trade. Yeah. That's not right. We are talking about shared trade. So I can explain it later if you are interested in it. But what's the... Sh is, is suppose you know I'm... You know, I'm, I'm, you know I, you I, have, I have fair to catch trade? the train. Yes. So tell me, tell me fast, what's, what's the difference between the shared trade and the fair trade? Fair trade is when you give more money to the farmers for the uh -huh. raw material. But share trade is when you share the benefit after selling to the market. Sounds I great. take one example. When you take the cacao bean from Ghana, yeah. you give 20 cents more to the farmer. Yeah. What we are asking for is when Nestle sells the chocolate in the supermarket, that money a part of it should go back to Africa. Oh my God, you are aiming high. Yeah, yeah. good, good, good. So, Max, and, uh, uh, what no, I love... no, no, we go back to the movie. <laughs> okay. no. Yeah, that's what I want to say. Ah, okay. uh, so, which part of the, uh, the movie you like the most, or hit, hit you the most? Mo, you, you are really a visionary. I love the all documentary. I call it documentary. Okay. Why? <laughs> because it's now like something uh, fictive. Yeah. But this will happen one day, and uh, it won't take no long anymore. And it's not going to happen like it is now in this mockumentary, because I don't wish anybody a uh, problem like flood and you know, disasters. What will happen is very different. And what will happen will be like closing the border from Africa not from Europe, but we close the border of Africa and because of our culture of hospitality, you will be always welcome to Africa. But we are closing the border for the influence of Europe, America and China. Europe, you can America, come to, you, to Africa, but you will have no one degree of influence in our businesses. Okay. So okay. that's what we think about. So that's okay. why I love this. Okay. It's you like happen. all the, the whole documentary you like. That's good. Yes. The whole concept you like. Okay, yeah. that's good. Okay, Elmira uh, Okanse, a member of Amsterdam City Rights. Amsterdam City Rights uh, supports initiatives for for and by undocumented uh, migrants in the city. And you also your, you have your own um, organization yeah. called Refugees for Amsterdam. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, which part of the, the, the movie you like the best? You know, it's touch all, it's, I like it all. I mean, I saw it for my English. But that's what my, Max said, you know, no, so really, you have to, cho no, you have to really, choose, no. uh, to choose one or two things. No, I, <laughs> because I almost see it in my country. I look like African, but I'm not like African. I've never been there, I'm from Russia. From? And, 
Russia, Rusland. Okay. My yes. God, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what I saw in this picture, in yeah. this movie, I almost see it in my country. It doesn't work like we just uh, close the border, yeah. but the uh, border is closed inside the heart of people. It's in Russia now, these migrants is never welcome. Mm. And mig uh, Russian people in other country, uh, before we was one country, country Soviet mm. Union, also not so welcome. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's almost happened there, and yeah. I wish it will be never happened in Europe. Yeah. So you recognize a lot yes, of similarities yes, yes, with the situation yes, yeah. in Russia. Okay. Um, so Mo said something about the documentary. I have a question for uh, four of you. Um, it's about our migration policy, um, and I know it's maybe a, you know it's a maybe difficult question, but I told you before we started, so you had time to think about it. You know, it's about the underlying concept behind our migration policy. What's the bigger, bigger idea, the bigger concept behind this policy? What does it say, this policy? You understand what I mean? Maybe you can start, no. uh, start with you? I need a little bit time to think well. Okay, that's very smart, okay. <laughs> so, let's start with uh, Arno. By the way, he pointed to you, Mo pointed oh, For to me, you. it's... Yeah, yeah. Uh, What's the idea behind our migration policy? Uh, policy? What do you think? The fear of losing. So we are so extremely privileged in, privileged in this country and this part of the world, uh, Europe, and we are so afraid of losing all that we have. Uh, we don't want to do a ski trip less uh, every year. We are losing uh, one car and we have four. Uh, we don't have any more empathy. We have no knowledge of the past. We don't realize what happened before World War II or before World War I or before. We don't think about humans anymore. We just think about ourselves and are very much afraid of losing what we have. So before the big economic crisis that hit us like four years ago, we went back to the economic level of 1994. You remember that terrible year in, in the Netherlands, 1994, when we were starving and almost dying on the streets? We, we, we're just spoiled. Yeah. And we are at the top of our, our for me, the welfare in this country, yeah. and we're so afraid of sharing and being empathetic and being human again. Uh, but I believe we will become human again because of movies like this and okay. people like this and people like the two people yeah. next to me cool. who, who try to bring people together again. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, did you have enough time to think about it? <laughs> Not, Not yet? <laughs> oh my God, you are playing really hard to get. Okay, Mo, you. What's the idea behind that? Uh, uh, for me, it was the idea of what is happening right now. And, and I couldn't imagine six months ago making this documentary, of mockumentary, um, if in the moment that we are right now, yeah. seeing the images of uh, in Athens and, and in, in, in Lesbos and, um, and, and even uh, day before yesterday, we had uh, the chairman of the Gay Pride uh, uh, saying uh, no more refugees here uh, on the national radio show. Um, so for me, the migration part is, as of Europe, is looking always to migration uh, as of, of color. So it's people of color that come over here, but uh, being a refugee of migration is not about color, it's just about people just moving from one side to the other. Um, one of the things that I've uh, uh, learned from Saada Nurhauser, last year she spoke at African uh, at Dag.nl, uh, she said, in this country we have a thing called Vreemdelingenpolitie. Uh, it's, it's something of the police to, to hunt people that are, are strange. Uh, but we don't have that in Africa. We don't, we, we don't, we don't even, like in, in Ethiopian language or Somali language, we don't have uh, framedling, uh, as somebody who's different from you, you it's just another guest. Uh, and as we, as we can see uh, uh, how we are here today, everybody's a guest and I hope that we can do that for the rest of the time being that we are here on earth, to treat everybody as just a normal guest instead of a refugee, instead of a migrant or whatever. Cool.
before. Um, Elmira, you had enough time to think about it, or shall I? Uh... It's a very difficult question for me because I'm 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 not part of this country yet. Yeah. But yeah. you know something about what's the idea behind, as you have experienced it. Yeah, of course. What does it say, this, this, our loss, how we encounter other people, undocumented people? What does it say about the idea behind it? I think we should be more friendly. Yeah. We should respect each other. Yeah. Mm, and... I don't know my English, sorry. <laughs> uh, no problem, no, no problem. I, mean, I, I, I just that. want to say um, we need to get chance to show who we are. So, if you understand what you yeah. mean. So yeah. uh, you, uh, you are implying, you are saying that the current idea is yeah. not friendly, not respectful, and it doesn't allow people to show themselves. That's yeah. the idea. Yeah. And being not respectful, uh, to add yeah. on that, yeah. uh, we have this thing in the Netherlands is also yeah, nieuwsgierigheid, curiosity, yeah. that you just on an everyday, on a birthday party or somewhere, you ask a refugee like, hey, where are you from? Tell me your yeah. story. Yeah. Uh, that's very bad. Uh, and please stop doing that because yeah. you're asking a refugee to recall a traumatic event yeah. that has happened, that he's uh, repressed in his memory. And... I'm not going to do that as well at the birthday party to ask somebody, a woman, like, hey, you've been raped, tell me your story. Tell me your story about how you've been raped. And then I called my friends and I said, hey, hey, come, come sit next to me and, uh, and listen to this woman telling this story. And she speaks very good Dutch. Yeah. We don't do that. Yeah. So I really urge you to tell a lot of people to stop asking refugees to tell their story because it's very wrong. They already because here. they are already here. They're, they're already okay. here and they're just human beings. And if they really want to tell that story, they will tell you that story. Okay. You don't have to ask that. Max, the same question for you. In your opinion, mm -hmm. what's the, the bigger picture behind our uh, migration policy? Um, we should think first, why is it migration policies? What mm -hmm. are migration policies? why there is migration like it's happening now. So that's very important. Yeah. I'm more thinking about uh, inclusive development of every continent. every continent. Migration can be seen for people who are receiving migrants as something uh, negative or positive. You see it in the debate, in political debate, but also on the street, like Mo is saying, with mm -hmm. friends and everywhere on the street. But on the other side, when I, I refer to Africa, when you think that in the UK only, there are 25,000 doctors from Nigeria only. I'm not only talking about one European country. If you go to Canada, there are more. You go to any other countries in the United States, all our intelligent people are outside of Africa. Who is going to develop Africa? So it can be nice to take care of migrants, it's prima in Dutch, yeah. <laughs> but for us there is a big problem in Africa. But why is this movement of people? Do you all live in Amsterdam? Okay, for the one who lives in Amsterdam, you know the Belmer. Yeah. That's where the most Ghanaian live in the Netherlands. Mm. And the Ghanaian are the biggest community of African migrants in the Netherlands. We are doing a research at this moment with the University of Wageningen. More than 70% of people living in the Belmer from Ghana are coming from region where we take cacao beans from. When the cacao beans came, come to the Netherlands, we make every year 120 billion of euro benefit out of it. Do you know how much money goes back to Ghana? 62 million only. So those people are sitting here now. So we should think about why is it migration like it is now? To finish, just shortly, you will never hear someone like um, uh, Gert Wilders shouting 
we want less Chinese in the Netherlands. That is saying less Moroccan, less Moroccan. Now he's coming with a remigration plan for African people. Mm -hmm. Okay, this guy will never, even when he's drunk, he will never say less Chinese. So migration policies are also related to the power relation between countries. We are very weak at this moment in Africa and everywhere we go in the world, people are treating us the way it is now. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was saying in the beginning. One day, and it will happen very soon, Africa will get united, and then it will be another story. That's a time where nobody will have influences on African raw material, on African people, on African thinking. Yeah. That's okay. the way I look okay. at the As migration. a matter of fact, that will be my, uh, one of my questions. You know, if you look, so that's the idea behind the, the current situation. Uh, what will happen in the future, or what will your ideal situation would be if Mo would be the prince of Orangia, or, or Arno, of, uh, or Max, of, uh, I don't know, Elmira. Of course, you have to think about it. I know, I know your policy. But that would be the question if you look forward, okay. you know, what would you So like I can rest change? now, I can <laughs> Yes, yeah. Um, by the way, um, you know, we now realized in, in past month, you know, unfortunately, with a very sad reason, that uh, we are very dependent on China. So we know that, that's a fact. Um, if I ask you, you know, can we live, um, can, you, can we maintain without Africa? Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Tell me why not? No, why? because yeah, uh, I think we both need each other. I think uh, Europe and Africa both need each other. Uh, but I think the deals that are being made right now and the deals that have been uh, made in, in, the, in the past are very wrong deals about uh, really taking the wealth out of Africa. And um, so we are now, as Africans, we are depending on Europeans to help us. Yeah. Uh, but in the near future, I think it really is going to be the other way around. Uh, but I hope that we can really come together into a fair agreement. Okay. Yeah. The same question for you. How do you see um, the you relationship we're between you? On China? Excuse me. Because you're referring to the coronavirus, right? No. <laughs> are you referring to that? To what? We to are dependent on China. Are, are, you, are you referring, referring to, to the coronavirus? To who? Corona. Oh yeah, yeah. A no, no, no. In a way, that no, no, no. Became a virus. In a way, you know. In a way, you know how we, how we are now. We realize that how dependent we are on, on China. No, we're, we're depending on fear because the the whole virus thing is we are we we are in total fear of our yeah. local workforces yeah. getting the flu altogether, and then the whole economic local economics will come to a standstill. Thank you for correcting me. Now we go to Africa. Yeah. What's our relationship yes. with Africa? I and mean, can we maintain, can we live without Africa or with Africa? Same question for you. That's no, impossible. If you look at computers, at, at mobile phones, at, at the raw material that the world needs, yeah. It's impossible to, to, to live without Africa. And I really, really agree with Max. And, He's a lot smarter than me. Um, but what he's saying is that Africa will take back its, its power. And we are referring to a, a power period of about 400 years where we destroyed mm -hmm. a continent, we as Europe did. Yeah. But we are, not, we are not the ones at power anymore. Not even far. Africa is there. Uh, Asia is there. South America is there. We are... We are really losing out, and we will lose out in the next coming 50 years, uh, or even sooner than that, and there's no way that Europe can survive without Africa, okay. and we need to wake the fuck up. Sorry for that word, but we really need to wake the fuck up, and I'm not even gonna apologize anymore. Okay, no problem. Same question for you. Yeah. Um, I, I agree with Mo, what Mo is saying. We need each other. Basically, I believe we human beings, we are here on earth to make a paradise of it. If you read the Bible or the Quran, all these holy books start by the story, God has kicked us out of the paradise. Yeah. Which means 
our mission statement is to come back to the paradise. So we can make it. How but about the atheists? <laughs> which atheists? No, I'm not done yet. <laughs> that is basically what we could do. Try to make a paradise of this earth. Okay. But it's not happening because of uh, the, the way of thinking, you know. Uh, but to come back to a question, yeah. We need each other. I will give one example about that. But when you look at now, Europe, uh, you say China is controlling. But Europe, China, America, they are all depending on Africa. I don't know if you follow the news. Uh, Donald Trump have, has invited all the 54 presidents of our Africa. They went there. Uh, the AU invited all the 54 presidents of Africa. They went there. Chinese invited them all, they went there. So everybody is running after Africa. And when Chinese take raw materials in Africa, they make products for us. So that's why Europe is pulling back now because China is doing the, the, the what to say in the Netherlands, the fis verek, yeah. file verek. Yeah. So they are doing the dirty work. Yeah. But that's not a problem. Like I told you, one day we will stop that in Africa. Yeah. So Europe, and China and America all need Africa because of three things. In a few years, Afri Africa will become the biggest market in the world. So we are talking about trade, so selling. The most consumer will be in Africa. Yeah. Secondly, everybody has already talked about that, the raw material we need. Yeah. So we will have to get with them. And third, that's the most important in my view, when Africa will get on power, in the normal position of Africa, Africa can contribute to the peace in the world, to security in the world, and stop all this system, go behind the capitalism, and come up with new political and economical system. We have them all in Africa already. We cool. can take it to the rest of the world. Cool. Okay. So, uh, Elmira, how about you? Now you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, Africa is my blood. Yeah. And okay. I can't believe Africa can live without Europe, of course. But Africa Europe cannot live without Europe? Okay. Can live. Can live, yes, yeah. I think so. Uh -huh. But Europe cannot, and America also cannot. Give, me, give us uh, no, give me an just, example just, how you uh, see that. No, my, my father, he was from Congo. Uh -huh. it's, now we can see he's very poor country, yeah. but they have everything there. Yeah. And they, if they will get them power, they really can live without Europe, I think. But mm. it's not good idea, because we need each other, mm -hmm. like people, like human, like we yeah. need it. Yeah. Uh, um, um, I want to go to the others, whether they have any questions for you, or they want to uh, react. And with that, by the way, it would be the best. If you just stand up, I will come to you with my microphone. As you can imagine, uh, especially relating this uh, subject, I will not give away the microphone. So final remarks for you, and then I will go to the yeah. audience. Max? Okay. Sorry, I forgot something. When I said we need each other, one example, at this moment in the Netherlands, farmers are in trouble. Yeah. You all know that. Okay. But in Africa, we have 400 million hectares of arable land. Now they are fighting the government here, but there is no solution. So my idea, and that is what we wrote to the parliament, we told them, look, please, connect these farmers with farmers in Africa. Connect these farmers with Africans like us here in the Netherlands with agricultural land in Africa so mm -hmm. they can get a second chance in life. So that's what I mean. We could what open the borders and Max, work together. What did they say? In the, you, you said that in the parliament? Yeah, we sent the, the And what did they say? They say you are crazy. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> You are crazy because we want to send our farmers to Australia, to Canada, to Canada not to so Africa. We, yes, yeah. In Africa, we just need gold from Ghana. Yeah. We need oil from Nigeria. But yeah. we don't help you with agriculture like that. OK. Mo, final remark for you before I go to the audience. Uh, yeah, final remark. Uh, first of all, we really want to thank everybody that's here. And I'm, I have a very proud moment to show my <laughs> documentary. Uh, the other thing I really want to uh, yeah, ask you to think about and uh, when leaving tonight is uh, the elections are coming up. I know it's, it's a year uh, to our elections, but uh, it's already started right now. 
as you can see, the main subject is again migrants and specifically migrants from Africa. And uh, I really want to urge you to vote accordingly and really help to change our parliament and uh, to have a better yeah, country again. Because uh, this, what's happening right now, it's, yeah, it's very sad for me. So I really, yeah, this is my message to you to, to really do well. Okay. <laughs> Uh, questions, please raise your hand. I see already Eisbrand. I guess I, he had some some uh, speaking time. He had for the spirit that he had, but toch. Maar please, here, raise your hand. I will come to you. Please wait, wait. Please stand up. Excuse me. Yeah, that's heel vervelend. Maar iemand moet het doen. Yes. Is there a need for an African Union, like a European Union? And if so, when will it happen? There is an African Union, I am afraid. Am I right? But, but what should be, you know, the African Union? What do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I, I think there is already an African yeah, Union. Yeah, there is, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a global already, and uh, uh, they meet each other, uh, I think, uh, on a, yeah, yeah, currently a base in, uh, in Addis Ababa. Uh, that's the main headquarters. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there's a lot of opportunities of a lot of African leaders already united. The only thing what's not united is the, the economy that is uh, in one country that doesn't yeah, flip over because there's a lot of Europeans in between. Yeah. M Max, why are you laughing when, uh, when said, there is an African Union? Like you don't, <laughs> tell me why, why, why? Um, the uh, current African Union is fake. What I am talking about is United States of Africa. So like Nigeria won't be a country anymore. Yeah. Now we are dealing with 54 presidents in Africa. Yeah. In our vision, and I'm not the only one. Yeah. At this day, in Africa, we are more than two or three million young people thinking like this. We need one president. And in all those parts of Africa will become like governorate. So you will have someone there, he's a governor, of West Africa, a governor of East Africa, a governor of Central Africa, yeah. a governor of South Africa. And those governors yeah. are not allowed to talk about raw material with anyone. Okay. Only the central government of Africa, we will talk about that. Okay. So the African Union of now is okay, but I don't know if you know this, they are settled uh, in a building built by Chinese, full of microphone and cameras. So everything they say there is taken directly to the secret service of China. So they are not free to do nothing. Yeah. But maybe, you know, the way you put it, you know, yeah. if you know it, probably they know it as well. They know. They, so That's knows. why they're doing it. Yeah. But what we are talking about is a revolution. It's very different than asking people, do yeah. you like to work together? And yeah. We don't ask that. No. Revol when the revolution time comes, okay. it just has to happen. Okay. Questions over uh, here? Please raise your hand. Yes. Okay. Please stand up. Yes. What's your question? Hi. So on the one hand, you said like, um, the future is that Africa is going to be like a main continent where all the white people, so to say, fled to. But you also mentioned the Chinese. And at this point in time, I would like to ask you, the Chinese have built, for instance, the airport in Lusaka in Zambia, which is not being used. They've built this huge train thing in uh, Nairobi through Nai Nairobi yeah, National I've Park. Been there. Yeah. So the Chinese are really taking over. So how do you see that in the future? Because I think they take over everything. They build roads. In Kenya, there are so much roads built by the Chinese. Yeah. So now you told us about this building. So in my opinion, I wish it was going to be like you said, yeah. but I think the Chinese are really, really taking over. Um, Chinese are not taking it over. They have an uh, entrepreneurial mind, and Chinese are very fast. When the reformers of Africa will come on power, Chinese will collaborate direct, because they, they did the same in China. So what we will have in Africa, it will be a government like the government of China. You don't play with them. 
But it so, doesn't. It doesn't sound nice. And you, you say Kenya. Max. You say Kenya. Max. Wait. Max. No. 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 When yeah. you say no, it will become like a Chinese government, and you don't play with them. Of course, nobody. Nobody plays with Chinese government. Yeah. But it doesn't sound sound like a nice government. The Chinese government. Correct me if same, I'm wrong. We have the same government in America, in Europe. You think you are free in Europe? Do you think that really we can talk? We can move, we have yeah. a space of freedom, yeah. but the real important things are happening without asking anybody here. Yeah. When our pension funds invest in, our memo in, in, uh, in weapons, yeah. they don't ask you. Oh. So don't think a government is free, it's relaxed, it's yeah. all government are like that. Yeah. But what I'm talking about, to uh, answer your question, is about changing the legal status of countries. Okay. When that happened, China has an uh, agreement with the government of Kenya. But if there is no government of Kenya, yeah. you cannot go now to Poland and tell them we have an agreement with Soviet Union. <laughs> they will laugh on you. They will yeah. tell you, sorry, the Soviet Union is okay. not there. Okay, cool. We are Poland, so yeah. that's... By the way, uh, I have kind of idea okay, that every question is coming, you know, you respond, you know? That's no. good, but nevertheless, nevertheless, okay, there is over there a question. We have about 10 minutes to go, please. <laughs> I hope I can put it down in a small question, but it seems to be like two different, uh, two, two separate things or two, two things. Like at the one hand, the big um, overall thinking and as a shift of the world, and at the other hand, our small country with big problems in our daily life, and we have to adjust, adjust to the fact that a lot of people who we are not brought up with come here, and that is the majority of the people who, uh, uh, problem. Yeah. I'm happy with uh, the response of the, the men at the table, but there is not um, the uh, Dutch, uh, Dutch Mo, people. Mo. Yeah. Max, no. Hey. Yeah, I know, yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> because uh, I, I think uh, a lot of people don't have, they haven't even heard of the word white privilege. White privilege, what is that? I don't do that when you speak about it. I also wasn't aware of it. I live in Southeast, my husband is from Nigeria. I love it, but it is a choice. And I happen to love it. So my white family say, what are you doing there? Let them come here. Why are you living there? So it's still that camp. And it's only your heart can help you to see the beauty in the other person. But, Sorry, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you very much, but correct me if I'm wrong, there was no question, am I right? Yeah, there was no question. Uh, no, still, I, 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 like, I, I like to respond a little yes, bit. Please, yes, please, yes. Because it's not only your heart that can help you, it's, yeah. uh, it's the education that we give our children that can help you. And we're not educating our children on this level. We're not teaching them about privilege, we're not teaching them about what we did as white mm. Netherlands in the world. Yeah. There's no history lessons about what we did in Indonesia, there's no history lessons about what we did in the slavery period, we're not teaching our children. So yeah, it's your heart, but it's also common knowledge that you yeah. can teach kids okay. and human beings and grown-ups. Mo? Uh, the one thing, I, uh, I live in Almere, and I, I think it's the, one of the oh, greatest cities. Oh, one of the refugees in Almere, yeah. okay. I, I, I have to say that, I get, I get paid to say that all the time. No. <laughs> <clears throat> no, but uh, the main thing is I, I've, uh, I've come to Amsterdam many times and, um, and I've seen a lot of diversity in Amsterdam, but also a lot of separate diversity. So the one thing is uh, Donald Trump is talking about building a wall between Mexico and, and America, but uh, here in Amsterdam you already have a wall. And the wall is between Amsterdam Zuidoost and Amstelveen. There's a big highway in between and that separates two different races. And, and it was very crazy for me. I, uh, last year, I had two performances as a stand-up comedian. I had one, I had one in, uh, in the Belmer, and, the, and at night, I had to go to Amstelveen. It's, it's like a shock. It's like a total shock within a, a five-kilometer space. So you don't need to think about other countries. The think about Amstelveen, Zuidoos, you're already there. Okay. Was it a shock for you or for people in Amstelveen for to me see was, you? For me, it was for me. It oh, was okay, shock. okay, okay, okay. For me, it was shock. Um, Esperant, I cannot ignore your hand anymore. Okay, please stand up. Okay, no, no, no okay. And you know the sentence with the question mark? 
I have a question. Cool. But first, I have a statement. I think I agree with Max and the others that we had colonialism and now we will never solve, let's say, the problem with Africa as long as we continue to be post-colonialists, right? Because now we are in the situation of post-colonialism, which leads to a refugee uh, exodus towards Europe. Now there are 18 to 20,000 people at the Greek border in no man's land. What does the forum think we should do with these people? And oh, what that is a very nice a small question for the next seven minutes because Max, I promise you because you are one of the people who don't live in Amsterdam, I know it's outrageous, <laughs> but you have to take the train back to okay. Nijmegen. Yeah. We have seven minutes. Mm -hmm. what, will sh what should we do? Right now, that's the final question with this, uh, let's say, crisis. There is a crisis over there, yes? Yeah. The How border. many people? Uh, maybe 80 or 20,000. Maybe more. It's not a problem. How many countries do we have in Europe? 51 or two. Yeah, so... Oh, I spent, you had your time, please. You had your yeah. ask, you could ask a question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. please, please. So we just have to divide them into those countries and Okay. Yes. Can we That's all. That's not the a problem. Security I don't see any problem on that. Yeah. Okay. So well, divide them. They are more. welcome. More. More. Um, they are. Of course, they are welcome. But uh, we also have a problem here in Amsterdam itself. I, I, and, and as a city uh, uh, worker here in Amsterdam side, those there's a supermarket that has rebuilt to a shelter. There are 200 yeah. Africans in a shelter with one bathroom and one toilet. Yeah. And, and, and all of you don't know about this, but I've visited uh, with Mapansu um, Mabenga, who's, a, who's also uh, in the documentary. So instead of looking further away to the borders of Greek, look here in Amsterdam, what is going on with a lot of people being undocumented and really no, have no help. Uh, so I really want to urge everybody not only to think about there, but here okay. as well. Uh, Arno, the same question for you, and I will end up with you, okay? Arno, same no, question no, for you. No, but for, for me, the, the, uh, the, the solution lies in technology. So there's a big, there's a big um, problem with the undocumented part of things. Yeah. And if you start documented people with the help of blockchain technology, then everybody's identity will be safe. Yeah. So now people are without identity. So when they cross a border, you will not know if they have a diploma or if they're educated or yeah. what their name is yeah. or when they were born. So the solution needs to, it, it's not gonna be solved in a day, yeah? So bringing them in, okay. yes, that's my, I, I'm fully with you, yeah. I agree with you, and yeah. then the next and then the next, that's, that's the real problem. Yeah. But the real problem is that we have people crossing borders without identities. Okay. And the identity solution lies in technology, and if we solve that identity solution, and the solution is already there, okay. we just need to have the willingness to, okay. to do it. Three different perspectives. Final note for you. How do you see that? Mm, I don't have any document. <laughs> and of course, it's, it's very nice to be friendly, to be welcome for everyone yeah. who wait in the near border. But how many people without document live here? And tomorrow when all of these people will come here, are you sure they will get something here? All, or they will live like Mo said, a group in garage, yeah. we yeah. are here, yeah. or without any perspective, without nothing? It's very nice to say welcome, okay. yeah. but then what you should do? It's very smart for you to end up with a question again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good, good, good. That no, is, okay, that's yeah. good. That's, I like it. I like it. That's probably why uh, the, the 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 editor in chief of this program probably she invited you to to yeah. confuse us. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, well, Mo. <laughs> Uh, what, is, what, what, what are you going to do with your documentary? What are the plans for the next days, weeks, month? Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm uh, yeah, very thankful for Pak Heizeswerker to have this uh, here. Uh, and uh, I've, yeah, I've, I, 
I've been flooded with emails, so um, I'm going on a tour through the Netherlands. Yeah. So um, we already have requested uh, coming in from uh, uh, universities of Eindhoven uh, and also from Erasmus uh, University of uh, Rotterdam. But we're also going to have like pop-up viewings throughout the Netherlands. And um, for if you have f friends or families, uh, on the 4th of April, uh, we will be showing the movie at the Tropo Museum uh, okay. on Africa Dog. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, please yeah, visit my website, moherzy.nl, and then uh, you can see where the next following uh, viewing is. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you very much. Okay, we started with uh, three uh, uh, other documentary makers and uh, first press, so thank you for organizing this whole project. Thank you again. And of course, the, what? Uh, I really want to thank, uh, sorry, one thing, I, I'll, otherwise I forget. I really want to thank my fan, uh, Fonds Bijzondere Journalistieke Projecten, for uh, het mede mogelijk maken van mijn documentaire. Okay, nou, ook reclame gemaakt, mooi, mooi, mooi. Okay. Okay, and you, you want to add something? Yes, uh, my English is very bad. I don't no. know Dutch well, uh -huh. yeah. and I don't speak Italian also. Yeah. But all of this movie was very understandful, yeah. and it's part of my life, it's part of me, and I understand everything what I saw there. Yeah, cool. Thank you very much. Thank you, okay, cool, cool. Nice to hear, okay. Um, Members of panel, thank you again for your for your participation. And uh, I know you have to go, but if you want, you will stay here. If you want to talk to you, maybe to invite you, maybe to show your documentary there, or to invite you, you know, to tell something about your organization. But and thank you, all of you, for being here at your Friday night. And ga in vrede, the body's lost. Thank you well. Yeah. <laughs>